Well, since I'm still biding my time to make my list for 2017, I thought it would be a good time to take a look back at 2015. I was really getting more involved with seasonal anime then and was learning how to appreciate shows from a critical perspective. But don't worry, I quickly grew out of that phase and went back to being a shonen fanboy. So let's get into some of my favorite anime from 2015, or at least those I find that are most worth remembering. Like my last video, this list is unranked, and while you might not like everything here, my goal is to identify at least one show that you should go check out that you might have missed. So let's get on with the list. Number one, Assassination Classroom. I love absurd anime, especially when they are able to use a strange concept to tell a story that really takes advantage of the absurdity. And there are a few better examples of this than Assassination Classroom. It's about a creature with many tentacles who destroy the moon, threatening to destroy the earth, and so a class of misfits that he's decided to teach must kill him before the school year is up to save the world. It is just as weird as it sounds. There's a lot of comedy here, with most of the show being pretty lighthearted, but this only works to amplify the more serious parts of the show as they explore the lives of these kids and how their teacher, who is going to destroy the world, is able to help them grow. Plus, it goes full action shonen a couple times, and I did enjoy those parts quite a lot. There are few shows that are able to illustrate why I love anime as much as Assassination Classroom, and more than any single episode or arc, the hopeful message of the show is something that stuck with me. Number 2. Yuri Kuma Arashi. Well, I couldn't be talking about absurd anime without talking about Yuri Kuma Arashi. It directly translates to lesbian bear storm, and that seems quite fitting. If you've seen Penguin Drum or Utena, you might know what to expect from the shows of Ikuhara, and if you haven't seen them before, then Yuri Kuma Arashi will be even more of an experience. It is a show filled with symbolism and a message about love and being outcast, and while I cannot say it's a show I completely like, but when talking about shows from 2015, it is one that deserves not to be forgotten. So give this a try at least. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't, but I do not think you'll regret watching it. Number three, Parasite. And here we are back to the types of suspense shows that I love. It is a show about a guy whose right hand is taken over by an alien parasite, and he and the parasite have to team up to fight others who have been completely taken over by another parasite. It's not so different from other shows that have a main character become some type of other creature and have to fight others like them. What does set the show apart is how it shows a bond between Shinichi and Megi and just the inhumanness of the parasites, even though some want to understand humanity. Add that onto a thrilling story filled with action, and well, it's no wonder I like the show. Number four, Black Butler, Book of Murder. I might be cheating a little bit here, since this entry is for all of Black Butler that has aired since Book of Circus in 2014, but I already had 10 shows for that list, so I'm counting it here. Black Butler has been a constant favorite of mine every time a new iteration of the series has come out, though if you have not seen the show before, it takes place in Victoria in England, and follows CL, a young noble as he seeks to avenge his parents' murder, and is frequently tasked by the Queen to investigate the underbelly of society. He is joined in this by his demonic butler Sebastian along with his servants who are all more than they first appear to be. Book of Mutter specifically is crafted like a Sherlock style mystery where Sebastian is found dead and Ciel and the guests have to figure out who is behind the murder. I really like the layers of mystery here since you know that there is more to what is going on than Ciel lets on though it's hard to figure out exactly what. With the mystery suspense and the slowly unraveling question of what the queen is truly after this was another great entry of the series. Though if you do decide just pick up Black Butler, be warned that it diverges from the manga around two thirds of the way through season one and all of season two, and it retcons all of this out when it starts Book of Circus, so you can skip those parts. And well, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to. Uh, but when the show sticks to the manga, Black Butler really is a remarkable series. Number five, Show by Rock. When you think of cute girls playing cute music, you probably think of things like school idols, or eating sweets, or just a fun time. Well, Showboy Rock has that, but then they decided that things were too simple to stick with that, so they added a whole Save the World plot, because when you're an anime, you don't have to follow the rules of logic. And so, Show by Rock is one of my favorite music anime, or at least the one that's one of the most fun. Though it does have some interesting characters, and I love the different bands that are showcased, each with their own styles. Plus, when you have a style as bright and colorful as this, even stupid concepts can work well. Number six, 
Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Fate Stay Night is one of my favorite shonen anime because of how it dives into what it means to be a hero, especially for someone who is way in over his head but wants to save everyone he can. Plus, take all these themes about being a hero, add it on top of a death tournament with great looking action, and well, I know why people like Fate so much. This is a show filled with a lot of great twists, just a lot of great moments, but more than that, it is filled with a message of going to follow your dreams, even if they may be unrealistic. And really, what more could I ask for in an anime? Number seven, Punchline. And here's one of my favorite shows to talk about when I talk about obscure anime. Because this is a show that at first glance looks to be a fan service harem comedy with some weird things going on, like the world exploding when the main guy sees a girl in her panties. But while the show may start off kind of slow, it's one that's building to one of the most unique storylines I've seen. Punchline is a story filled with twists and turns, but more than that, it's all about the friendship between these characters and those who pick up the mantle of hero to save the world all doing what only they can do. And if you haven't noticed, I like stories about heroes, so no surprise that I like Punchline. Number eight, Say Your Life. Slice of Life shows about the workplace are pretty rare, and because of this, I tend to like them quite a lot because I can relate to them more than people going through high school. And Say Your Life is a prime example of this. It follows the lives of several young voice actresses as they make their way through the industry, facing a number of challenges in the way. When this came out, I'd recently started my first job out of school and could really relate to being overwhelmed and not having any idea of what I was doing. But this show is all about overcoming these challenges. Plus, I also like learning about the anime and voice acting industry throughout the show. So if you want a slice of life about working that's light and fun for the most part, go check this one out. Number nine, Gekko Garashi, also known as School Life. Okay, this show. There are some shows that are able to latch on to me in a way that just makes them special to me, despite any flaws that they may have, and Gekko Garashi is a great example here. It is a very unique take on the moe slice of life genre, and well, that's all I'm going to say. Go give this one a try, especially if you know nothing about it. Watch the first episode or two. Tell me what you think. I'm curious. I have to know. Yes, that's a Hyoko reference. Are you happy now, Abby? Number 10, One Punch Man. And finally, we have a show about a guy who punches bad guys and they explode. Yay. For real though, this is a show that's just a lot of fun and really knows how to play with the tropes about heroes. And yes, I like heroes. Though I do admit there are times where I wish it was a more conventional hero story instead of just like sabotaging those parts of it, though I know that's what makes One Punch Man so special. So if you have not seen this yet, you probably should. The action alone is worthwhile and it is a bit unique, even if I don't completely love it like some people. And so that is 10 anime from 2015 that you should check out. And you'll be glad to know I'm down to only 5 shows from 2017 and then I can start making my giant list. Why did I ever think this was a good idea? Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.